of all, I just want to say thank you so much for all the views. And um, if you like what you're seeing, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Don't just watch and then hop off, right? Because um, there's plenty more <laughs> to come. And so I was like, maybe I should give even more videos from uh, my time working abroad in both Kenya. Um, you saw my vlog about doing a conference in South Africa. And um, now I'm gonna post a video about my time visiting Ethiopia. And then also just learning how to balance enjoyment. <laughs> so just um, finding um, time for myself and to build community and to find out um, where I can like explore my different interests personally outside of work while I was living in, um, on the continent of Africa. And I, as I was going through the videos, I noticed that I didn't have any like confessionals or like me like talking into the camera about um, how I was feeling that day or just going over, uh, you know, just like thoughts like I have for the other videos that I posted already. So that's why I'm filming this. So this is real time me shown <laughs> talking to you. Um, and what I was going to do, which I thought might be a little bit interesting is because it's been over a year now since I've but since I moved, first moved to Kenya. So I thought what might be interesting is for me to go back and do like a real time reaction to me watching myself um, <laughs> experiencing all of those new different um, environments and um, exploring different um, parts of Africa, stories of Africa that to some extent I knew, but I didn't know the full extent. And maybe these are things that you're also thinking about if you're potentially thinking about moving to Africa because you're watching my videos. Um, so I want to be able to give you some candid and some um, real time advice on, you know, how to make your journey um, solid and how to start planning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch the videos that I recorded about my experience in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, which was a very, very interesting trip. Um, it was only a few days, unfortunately, but I got to do a lot <laughs> in the few days that I was there. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I was there for three days and it was part work, but it was also part um, visiting my family. So um, I have a um, beloved um, uncle, I call him my uncle. Um, he is, he used to work for my grandfather, who if you read my bio on my website, or if you have followed me on social media, you know that my grandfather was a diplomat for the Nigerian government uh, before he retired. And so um, my, who I call my uncle um, used to work for him and then gradually became the ambassador to Ethiopia for the Nigerian government as well. So I went to go see him. It was my first time seeing him in a very, very, very long time. So that was nice. I um, got to see him and my aunt, his wife. And so I was visiting them while also just exploring and getting to know um, the country of Ethiopia, which um, if you watched my South Africa video, you know that I was so excited to finally go to South Africa. It was something I said that I've been dreaming about doing for such a long time. Ethiopia was like literally next on the list. So it was South Africa, then it was Ethiopia, literally um, <laughs> on that list um, of countries that I desperately wanted to go see um, during my time in Africa. So I was so excited and privileged to be able to both spend time with my uncle and then also get to explore and learn more about the history of uh, the Ethiopian um, country. So without further ado, I'm going to literally watch in real time with you and react to uh, my videos that I took during my time visiting Ethiopia. That time at, at this was Bush, you know? Mm -hmm. When King... Uh, when he was really there, mm -hmm. at this was Bush. <laughs> Very interested in my place. Sorry? Very interested place where we are going now. Yeah. Historical. 
So Jonas was my driver um, for my tour and my just my time around Ethiopia or Addis Ababa. He was so knowledgeable about the history of uh, Ethiopia. He was, um, first of all, he was just like a sweetheart. <laughs> um, I, he, I have his phone number, but every time I text him, it's like the number doesn't work for whatever reason. It's really frustrating because um, I would love to continue to stay in touch with him. But um, he was so knowledgeable. He was so funny. Um, <laughs> it was great spending time with him. And um, he was probably the best uh, tour guide that someone could ask for in terms of like um, getting acquainted with the country. So that's what you're hearing in the background. Just one thing, one, three now. So that equals to Times one. Nine, 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 nine. Yeah, but if you drink three of these, it's equal to like a mug that we drink in America. Yes, so yes. it's okay. Mm -hmm. tried especially for this past year to reduce my intake of coffee <laughs> because it's not great for anxiety and stress <laughs> but I am a connoisseur and a deep appreciative appreciator if that's a word of the drink coffee so when I found out about the coffee ceremony that happened in Ethiopia, I was like, that needs to be something that I do. <laughs> um, but I was not prepared for how caffeinated their coffee is or how strong it is and um, what, it was, what reaction my body was going to have to it. So long story short, the taste of the coffee was exquisite. It was so smooth, <laughs> so delectable. I don't even know how to describe it. Um, it literally is like silk. <laughs> like I was drinking silk. If you can imagine what it's like to drink the smoothest linen possible ever and have it be tasty as well, that is what Ethiopian coffee is. Um, but fun story, so I drank it, um, enjoyed it, didn't really feel any difference about it at the time, right? Then I got back home to <laughs> uh, where I was staying with my aunt and uncle. And then I remember in the middle of the night, I could not go to sleep. I was like up for, I want to say at least three hours, at least three hours, just staring into the dark void, wondering how I was going to be able to get some rest, if at all, because it was just like, I was wired, <laughs> wired. Um, so I would not recommend it for the faint of heart <laughs> if you are someone who is very sensitive to caffeine or any kind of like stimulant because caffeine is actually a drug so if you're affected if you are seriously affected by any kind of stimulant drug you don't want to take it <laughs> but um, if you are a coffee lover like me um, I think it's worth the experience it was so 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 delicious um, and uh, this is a beautiful ceremony, I think. Uh, that, and it's just like another quintessential example of the, the thing that I love about um, being African and just this like emphasis on community. So um, the coffee ceremony um, is 
a forced habit within the Ethiopian culture for bringing people together and making sure that people are a taking a time to take a break from work which is very hard for me to do <laughs> and I do this three times a day so kudos to them um, they force themselves to take a break and they also force themselves to come together in community um, talking with one another and and you know slow slowing down the pace of the day um, in terms of the way that the coffee is served and is prepared like intentionally doing it very slowly to take time to just take a beat and appreciate um, um, experiencing one another and I just think that that's just again so gorgeous and so beautiful about us as African people and um, not something you see at all in the states it's like go 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 if you can eat while you're walking to your next meeting and consume the food finished by then great <laughs> That's actually what we appreciate more. But I'm so happy to know that that's not my that's not my culture. That's not my that's not my where my lineage comes from. My lineage dictates taking a beat to appreciate one another, and that the collective is more important than the individual. Yeah, you, you will show you the, the way the way to back down. Mm -hmm. There is a better view of the city. You can also place. Oh, okay. toward the curve line. It's very, it's not really clear, very hazy. Mm -hmm. I think you feel a bit the altitude. Yes, it's a lot. It's in Yes, the Nobel Peace. Mm -hmm. So one thing that was abundantly clear about uh, those people that I interacted with while I was in Ethiopia, especially at the museums, is that they are so unapologetically excited about being African and about specifically being black, <laughs> which I, I I just loved, I, I adored. Um, so Ethiopia, if you're not um, familiar, is the only country in Africa that was independent throughout. Um, it was never colonized, even though it was occupied for a couple of years, it was never officially colonized by any other country. And I think that they, um, from that um, specifically, they hold a deep sense of pride as Africans. Um, but also, I, I just really appreciate the fact that because it's 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 a political thing too in terms of like the difference between how, for example, Northern Africans versus Sub-Saharan Africans identify with each other, um, like this whole politics of. North Africans sometimes identifying more, or allegedly, I'll just say that, identifying more as Arabs versus Africans, um, depending on how advantageous it might be for them. And uh, I feel like Ethiopia can sometimes be on that cusp because of the way that they present, right? Not every person who is of Ethiopian descent visibly looks like a quote-unquote black person, right? Um, so the fact that no matter what kind of um, skin tone or what spectrum they were in terms of like their physical appearance, every single Ethiopian that I interacted with, including my tour guides that were um, part of the museum tours that I went on, were unapologetically identifying as black. They were like, we are the black man. <laughs> uh, we are African and we are proud of it. Um, and to be honest with you, that just gave me, it just gave me a source of, of pride. And that's not an image that you see a lot um, as experiencing the black experience in outside of the continent of Africa, whether it be in the United States where I was born and raised, or maybe in the UK, wherever you might be tuning in from. But I can talk from the um, African or black person growing up in America it's a it's the it's a total 180 right um you you almost feel like you're just always the bottom rung right you don't see yourself in a position of pride and authority like i did when i went to go see the wall of all the um the lineage of leaders that were um 
that came down the line of um, Ethiopia's history. Sorry? Our Lord. Uh -huh. Never been like that. It was made, yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So my favorite part of touring Addis Ababa was seeing all the historical churches. Uh, it's no secret if you follow me on social media that I am a devout Christian. Um, that's just my personal faith. I respect all faiths and I have a grandfather who is um, of the Islamic faith. So I really have an appreciation for um, different perspectives. Um, and they, they tell the stories so beautifully in the artwork that is in all the different um, ancient churches that they that they have across the city. Didn't get to see the oldest of the churches, which I believe is called Entoto. Um, that's not in Addis Ababa, but um, hopefully when I get to go back to the continent, I'll make sure, that's my first place that I'm going to. It's like an underground church in the, um, in the ground. Um, and I just, I just love and appreciate um, those kind of historic sites. But um, the ones that I did get to see were just as gorgeous, just as beautiful in terms of the stained glass work, the artistry and, and the paintings that were there, getting, getting to see the um, different relics and also the tombs of Alaa Selassie. It was, it was my favorite part of my my journey, my three day journey, although it was very very packed with a lot of things, um, <laughs> it was very short but it was packed with a lot of experiences and my favorite experiences was definitely seeing the historical church sites. See, being baptized. Oh wow! By Philip the Apostle. Oh, it's Philip. Yeah, I got it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no wow. Jonas was really the best. <laughs> he, he was my professional photographer, videographer, and tour guide, everything. <laughs> so um, he took me to, which I what I believe is the oldest um, 
injera restaurant in Addis Ababa, if not in Ethiopia. And I was never a fan of injera. We have a we have a quite a bit of Ethiopian restaurants here in um, the states, especially in Harlem, New York, that I've frequented. And I was never really a fan of injera, which is the sourdough bread, or I guess I can you can call it like a sourdough bread, but it's like a fermented bread um, that they use to eat their um, different meats and other um, foods um, in a platter. Just because it felt like it was just tasted too sour for me, there was something off about it for me. But then when I got to Ethiopia, I couldn't get enough of it. And I think it has to do with just like the way that things are grown and harvested there and then prepared there versus the way they are processed and have so many additives here in the United States. And that's just my opinion. I have no facts to back this up. Feel free to tell me in the comments if you're from Ethiopia why it tastes so much better in Ethiopia than it does in the United States, what your thoughts are. But um, I couldn't get enough of it. I was so full by the time I left um, that restaurant and then I got home and I had to eat because the chef had already prepared food, dinner for me. And I was like, oh my god, but I'm already stuffed, so I just had to do it. <laughs> but um, yeah, the injera there was authentic, delicious, tasty, and um, that was at the time where I was still eating meat. <laughs> so I loved the lamb, the freshness of it all. Um, just knowing that like the way it was prepared was just like... It, there wasn't all of this concern about what's going to happen to me if I ingested it. But um, I was so excited to enjoy um, authentic injera and um, all the different uh, platters that came along with eating that meal. Now, <laughs> Jonas also was very happy to get me drunk off of honey wine, which tastes like nothing, right? It just tastes like kind of like juice when you drink it. But boy, does it sneak up on you. <laughs> boy, does it sneak up on you. Um, so if you ever go to Ethiopia and then someone offers you honey wine, take your time with it. <laughs> just, again, I just really appreciate our culture. I appreciate us as a people and just like what we are able to create from our culture um, and how it's just like not replicated anywhere else in the world. Oh, okay, now it's recording, yeah. So Unity Park, um, visiting that area, it was quite emotional. Um, there were a lot of relics from not just the uh, modern time of Ethiopia, so maybe like from 1900s forward. Um, there was also some um, history behind, um, you know, the legend of the Queen of Sheba um, and King Solomon of Israel potentially mating and recreating the Christian lineage from Ethiopia, as well as, or the lineage of, sorry, the lineage of Solomon is what I think it is. I think Solomon is considered to be the child of Queen of Sheba and King David, I'm sorry. Either way, I digress. Um, so they, they talk about the, um, you know, pre-biblical or the biblical times of um, Ethiopian history. But they also do talk about um, the civil war that happened and the dirge regime, which was where um, there was um, ethnic clashes, uh, again, um, in terms of the war within um, the country of Ethiopia. <laughs> I'm not going to be 
kutia parana hizi soko Kusunga kata Kusunga kata Kusunga kata Many people were executed. Many people were put in camps where they were um, pushed into forced labor. Um, and then also at some point, Haile Selassie was assassinated, um, who was the last emperor of Ethiopia and who's also considered sort of like a religious figure of the Rastafarian um, faith. So all that being said, um, watching the videos of survivors of the dirge regime was very, very, very emotional. It was interesting that uh, the current prime minister, Ahmed, um, decided to transform um, this area that used to be the location of where the head of state, the prime minister, and like people of government would um, converge. He decided to turn it instead into a place where th we can explore this history and um, I guess wrestle with um, you know what happened as a result of that time period. All that being said, um, just not to make it too political, it was very emotional um, to experience that um, and watch uh, the videos of people testifying as to you know the torture that they went through. Um, and then how they were just trying to continue with life afterwards. Um, definitely appreciate it being taken there. Um, I'm sure that it's, it was like a, it's on the checklist of any tourist um, site to see if you're coming to Ethiopia, especially at Addis Ababa for the first time. But um, for me, someone who is a proud Pan-African woman um, and who really appreciates understanding um, her history and um, the, what her ancestors, you know, wherever country they might have been from on the continent of Africa have gone through, it was um, definitely an eye opener for me. And it's something that I wish that I wasn't just delving so deeply into as an adult. I wish that there's more, there was more education around what um, has happened um, in terms of, you know, the plight of different ethnic groups in Africa um, while I was a child, while I was still in school. Maybe, well, in the U.S. history or the U.S. education system, there's a lot going on as to why they don't talk about certain things. As children of the diaspora, I think it's very important for us to learn this kind of history as the sooner the better, um, because I think that that allows us to evolve into the leaders that potentially can support um, more positive change, not just on the continent of Africa, but wherever there are Af uh, communities of Africans around the world. Mm -hmm.